On this episode of the InfoWars News Blitz, the G20 meet to discuss how to prop up Hillary Clinton, whom Hamadine's mom is linked with an anti-Muslim book, and the OSCE rights group requests 500 UN observers to monitor our election. That and a lot more, so stay tuned. For the week of September the 5th, 2016, this is the first article day, and it's an article written by, well, the CNTV Network. The title is called, G G20 Summit to Deal with Rising Anti-Globalist Sentiment. It was written by Hang Peg. Why bother, China? China runs our dad. Uh, the article says that the G20 summit will take place amidst weak economy recovery and the lowest rate of global trade growth in three decades. China would be, would see the G20 leaders resist protectionism and instead seek economic growth through innovation and reform. CCTV's reporter spoke to some of China's brightest business leaders to hear their proposals to G20 leaders. <laughs> yeah, right, that's not really true. People don't like globalism because, not because globalism is bad, bad. If globalism can really benefit everyone and enable every individual and small business to take part, it will be a great, it would be great stuff. So we gave our proposal and I'm honored it's been written into the B20 policy recommendation reported re reported report said Jack May the proposal was launching economic trade a platform or WE or EWT the aim is to enable small business to trade globally through e-commerce yeah right man why don't you stop lying to us all man you know what you want Organizations is like a treaty of agreement and the gov among the governments. So rules and laws platform is enabler. We should set up more feasible ways for small business to do it," said Jack May. As commerce as a commerce tycoon, it is trying to by anti globalism through innovation. Others others leading businesses figure out a direct urge policy. Changes from the G20 leaders. All right, uh, let's take a read that out of there. So here's a clip about Alex Jones speaking about that. Meanwhile, G20 summit to deal with rising anti-globalism. The globalists are meeting. The leaders of nations are meeting to, to try to organize. They admit and stop their own populations, stopping them from stealing their sovereignty. That is a very very important article. It's on Infowars.com and DrudgeReport.com, where they openly admit, and they've been in everything from the New York Times, the Financial Times of London, The Economist, hitting the panic button, in fact, there's the New York Times, saying, world government's in trouble, our corporate takeover's in trouble, Hillary, if she falls, will be the next domino emergency, prop her up, do everything you can. So they've taken the gloves off. And I thank God they have. They are discrediting themselves. They are cutting their noses off despite their faces. They are burning themselves down. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. You see, that's what it really was about. Hillary Clinton is collapsing, and technically, she cannot basically, well, make it. She's not going to make it at all. You see, they know they're in trouble. If they can't get Hillary Clinton in, which is really what they're actually going to be talking about, then the whole thing's going to go down just like Brexit. They know it. The people are on, on the number. They can't stand it. They also know that basically the entire, uh, they know that Trump's going to basically kick them all out and tear everything up. And we have to live now, but that here's the second article here. It's an article written by 
Paul Sweeney, and that is called Who Met Anarchy's Mother Linked to Shocking Anti-Woman Book. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Little, uh, technical difficulties there, folks. As Secretary of State, a single woman's woman's rights champ Hillary Clinton, which we all know she's not, not only spoke at a SUNY girls' school run by her top aide, Huma Aberdeen, anti-feminist mother, but Clinton invited the elder Aberdeen to participate in an State Department event for leading thinkers on women's issues. The elder Aberdeen, whose daughter helps run Clinton's presidential campaign, did take a pro-gender equality stance on at least one issue, Muslim women's rights to participate in violent jihad alongside men. Wow, we can see how much of a freak, freak, freak to this turns out to be. Really. The journal also proposed women, but as Aunt Islamic argued that empowering of women does not, does more harm than benefit. Yeah, right. The wife should set. I mean, she goes on to say that the wife should set her husband's desire for sexual intercourse. The book states on page 202, even if she is not in the mood, she has a right to abs to abstain except for a reasonable cause or legal prohibition. Laws promoting feminist equality, moreover, are ineffective since man-made laws have, in fact, enslaved women, subjugated them to being cupidly and capitally of human beings. Islamic law is the only way, only solution, and the only escape. And here's Alex Jones about that. She, she pushes it worldwide. She's like the main proponent. I didn't even realize that last week when I talked about it. I knew she was a big one. I didn't know she's like the lady saying, cut your daughter's genitals off. These people are crazy. Their supporters are crazy. They're dumb. And what do you do when the general public acts like animals? The average Democratic Party voter acts dumber than a dog. They act like animals. But they have a weird obsession with tyranny and pushing it on you. I don't care what color they are. They're soft. They're stupid. They're weird. Their controllers are like, look like people out of a, you know, a crime movie. They're crazed. They're craven. You know, the news is, oh, she worked at a journal that opposed women's rights. No, her mother wants to cut your genitals off. How do they counter that? They just have hundreds of newspapers come out last week and say, I'm a big liar. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Told the truth. And, and now it's out in the news today. Uma Abedin's mom linked a shocking anti-woman book and has written in the support of having young girls' genitals removed so they, quote, don't have pleasure. Why'd God put it there then, you witch? Thank you. What? A freak. I mean, I mean, we already know what Paul DeWatt said, all right? So, well, so I'm not gonna say anything about this. But that's what it is. They're nothing but a bunch of freaks. They're freakish. That's all I can say. They want to mutilate, make women up one side and down the other, and they think it's fun and cool to absolutely do it. We cannot let this woman into the White House. I mean, we can't just, we, we, we can't do it. A woman will be wearing nothing but burkas and hijabs. And they, and, and she'll just let them all in. I mean, we're already, we're already swinging knee deep in, in Muslims already, and they're keeping it a secret from us. We cannot let this woman in. But enough about that. This is the last article here, and it's also written by Reuters. The title is called, OSCE Rights Groups Request 500 Inter- International observers to monitor U.S. presidential vote. I mean, they're about to steal it. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe aims to send 500 
international observers to observe November's presidential election, a tenfold increase from the number of the group group deployed in 2012. That means they're about to steal it, folks. A coalition of more than 20, more than 200 U.S. civil rights groups urged the OSCE in a letter released on Tuesday to provide even more, even more than 500 observers. The OSC, the OSCE requested based on an assessment it conducted in May. The actual observers will be dispatched by international security and rights organizations. 57 participant, participating states. Civil advocates say voters are more likely to face racial bias at the polls on November than they have in 50 years because of the voting laws that several states passed after the Supreme Court struck down the landmark anti-discrimination 1965 Voting Rights Act three years ago. Supporters of the law say they are necessary, they are necessary to combat voter fraud. OSCE spokesman Tom um, Remer says the number of observers in the group hope to be deployed with the United States was fixed at 500, but the leadership conference letter would factor into the into the group's decision about where to send the observers. I mean, folks, they're they're not here to basically observe to make sure that that there's no election fraud that fraud's gonna happen, as as Jill just said. They're here to make sure that it does happen. They are scared, people. They know that they're in a lot of trouble, and if Clinton doesn't get in by Look, all by crook, the whole thing's over, and they're all going down, and going down hard and fast. They know it. They can smell it. In the air, the public is waking up, and they have to get Clinton in, or else it'll be all over for them. Trump will wreck what they have put in place to have this country to go into receivership, and they'll have to pretty much... Just sit there kicking and screaming. However, they can also try to assassinate Trump as well. They, they know it. They know that that that, that will be their only option left, or crash the economy, which is also something they could also do. But enough about that, folks. This is basically it. I mean, I mean, the video is over. But please, please go to infowars.com. And prisonplant.com, they can find hundreds of articles like this one that you, I have read for you today, or go to the link below. You can see all the videos there. All the articles I have right there. This is the info for news with I'm Info Gotham, live on Fear Radio number 3. If you like, subscribe, and donate. And also, folks, please go to my YouTube page. It's, I have a PayPal account now up on the page itself, so you can go there and donate. I really do need your support. Bye-bye.